Objects play a crucial role in our everyday activities. Multisensory object-centric perception, reasoning, and interaction have been a key research topic in recent years. In this work, we introduced the Object Folder 2.0 dataset, which contains 1,000 objects in the form of implicit neural representations. We virtualize each object by encoding its intrinsics, texture, material type, and 3D shape, with an object file implicit neural representation, which through querying with the corresponding extrinsic parameters, we can obtain the visual appearance of the object from different views and lighting conditions, impact sounds of the object at each position, and tactile readings of the object at every surface location, respectively. Compared to Object Folder 1.0, our dataset is 10 times larger in number of objects and orders of magnitude faster in rendering time. We also significantly improve the multisensory data rendering quality for all three modalities. Another important improvement compared to Object Folder 1.0 is that while Object Folder 1.0 only performs tasks in simulation, we show that learning with our virtualized objects generalizes to the object's real-world counterparts on three challenging tasks, including object scale estimation, contact localization, and shape reconstruction. Next, we will show a visualization of the 1,000 objects in Object Folder 2.0. We leverage existing high-quality scans of real-world objects from online repositories such as Google Scanned Objects and the ABO dataset. We extract their physical parameters and simulate the visual, auditory, and tactile data for each object based on its intrinsics, and then use an implicit neural representation network to encode the simulated multisensory data. You can see that our dataset contains common household items of diverse categories. Next, we will show the visualization of the visual appearance for some sample objects in our dataset under different camera viewpoints or lighting conditions. Our Kilo OSF VisionNet can render images of objects from any camera viewpoint under arbitrary lighting conditions in real time. Next, we will show some examples of the auditory data, impact sounds, obtained from Object Folder 2.0 for two sample objects. The red arrow shows the impact position. We compare with the auditory data obtained from Object Folder 1.0 and the real impact sound recordings from real objects. Here is one example for the YCB mug object of steel material type. Here are impact sounds rendered from our dataset. Here are impact sounds from Object Folder 1.0. Object Folder 1.0 predicts audio spectrograms directly, and it cannot capture the details of the mode signal and leads to artifacts or noise in the rendered audio, which you may notice if you listen closely. And here is a real impact sound recording for this object as reference. Our audio net renders audio in a much more accurate manner. Though not perfect, it is more similar to impact sound recordings of real objects. Here is another example for a ceramic pitcher. Sound from our proposed dataset. Object Folder 1.0. and real impact sound recording. Next, we show more examples of the audio data in our dataset for some additional objects. This is a plastic dog bowl, and here are a few impact sounds. And this is a steel fry pan. A wooden gothic cabinet. an iron clamp, and a ceramic teapot. Next we will show some examples of the tactile data obtained from Object Folder 2.0 for some sample objects. We vary the contact locations as well as the contact rotation angle, phi t, and the gel penetration depth, P. 
In Object Folder 1.0, only a single tactile image can be rendered per vertex. Our new TouchNet can accurately render tactile readings of varied rotation angles and gel deformations, which is more realistic and flexible. As you can see on this picture, as we vary the contact rotation angle and gel penetration depth, the obtained tactile images also change accordingly. Here are the results at another contact location. Here are the results for a medicine bottle object and at another location on the bottle. Results for a coffee mug and at another location on the mug. Here are results for a teapot and another location on the teapot. Next, we will show some examples of the tactile data obtained from Object Folder 2.0 compared with simulated tactile images from the Tacto simulator used in Object Folder 1.0, as well as the tactile readings from real-world gel site sensors. Compared to the ground truth simulated tactile images from Tacto used in Object Folder 1.0, our implicit neural representation networks more accurately encode the multisensory data for the objects and match the real-world tactile readings much better. Here are additional examples from the teapot object. Next we will show some examples of the tactile audio contact localization task for two real world objects. For each example, we show a sequence of real tactile readings and impact sounds for the object and the particle filtering process for predicting the contact localizations. Here is the tactile data and impact sound data for the first contact location. For initialization of particle filtering, we randomly sample 2,500 particles from the sine distance function that represents the object. At each iteration, we extract features from the tactile readings and impact sounds. We use cosine similarities to compare these features with particles sampled from the object's surface, which represent candidate contact locations. In each iteration, we resample the particles based on their similarity scores. We assign larger weights to the particles of larger similarity scores. Here's the second iteration. The third, the fourth, the fifth, and the final iteration. Finally, green particles converge to the red particle, which is the ground truth contact location. Here is another example with a ceramic pitcher. Leveraging features extracted from our simulated data, we can successfully predict contact locations in real-world experiments. Next, we will show examples of the Visuo Tactile Shape Reconstruction task for two real-world objects. For each example, we show the real image of the object and the sequence of tactile images used to guide the shape completion process. We collect real touch readings around the object. Then we sample a sparse point cloud from the collected tactile images. Combining visual cues from the image and the sparse point cloud from the tactile readings, we use a point completion network to reconstruct the dense point cloud. Note that we are learning with simulation data only, and we directly transfer learned models to real-world objects. We can see that the reconstructed point cloud accurately captures the shapes of the object. Here is another example for a wooden block. Additionally, we have performed a new challenging object manipulation task, 
grasp stability prediction. The goal is to predict grasp stability of a robotic arm before lifting the object based on tactile images. We generate the tactile images from our TouchNet based on the grasp contact positions, orientations, and gel deformations, and then label each grasp as either success or failure based on the grasp outcome. We train a ResNet 18 binary classifier based on the touch images obtained from the TouchNet for the medicine bottle object. We perform sim to real and test the classifier trained only on simulated data on real gel site images. Next, we will show examples of a successful grasp and a failed grasp. Here is an example of a successful grasp. And here is an example of a failed grasp. Thanks for watching.